everybody. Morning, everybody. I am Cinnamon Cooney, your R Sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you how, step by step, you can paint a gorgeous little butterfly on a red flower. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be breaking down everything you need to know to create this painting yourself. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to make sure my coffee is warm, but more importantly, he's going to make sure that one of our robotic cameras is pointing at the part of the easel or color mix that I'm demonstrating and talking about. And this is really going to help you at home be able to create your own painting because you're going to see the techniques that are being demonstrated. You're really going to be able to see and understand the color mixes that are being demonstrated. To that end, if you check the description below, you'll see more information on the materials that I'm using, places that you can follow me, all the sort of details that you want to know. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you're into free art lessons, if that's a thing that you're about and you'd like to learn how to paint all of the things, uh, I definitely have almost all the things here. I think I'm missing a manatee. Now, that's it. <laughs> no. hmm. I mean, I'm sure I'm missing a few things, but if you do want to tell me things that you might be interested in painting, definitely leave a comment uh, either on the stories tab or in the comments down below. I answer those. I read those. I'm about those. Um, this is an exciting day. You are certainly about the comments lately. lately. Oh, man. I, well, I've discovered a new feature where I can answer via video. <laughs> This is, if this, if there was a way, man, if there was a way to get Cinnamon to be able to talk to you guys more, it was to give her a video way of talking to you. <laughs> the story tab is on mobile and you just click my face on the channel and it takes you there and you can ask me a question. I can reply in video. It's super fun. But I also try to reply to the comments on the channel, really, because this is about our time together and our course. Okay. I'm, um, I'm mm -hmm. going to encourage them to abuse this and try, because I want to see how far we can go with this. Like, how many comments can Cinnamon leave? I'll so answer go, them all. So go engage with her. I I'll see, answer them all. I want to see. Be a video. You can see this. Actually, I was able to give some good advice. I saw. I, yeah, saw, I was saw very this excited morning. about that. People were, like, asking me pretty meaningful questions. I was like, they're so awesome, my community. So Did, today we're teaching what this thing? The butterfly on the red flower. Isn't he awesome? Mm. Fantastic. And we're going to do this on a 16 by 20 surface. The I have a little wish or intention. I like to do this on my canvas. And one is for um, healing and strength through loss. Uh, you know, for our own Rebecca Hoffman kind of went through mm -hmm. some stuff yesterday. And we're just wishing her all the strength and healing and support that she could possibly have. And then also, kind of on a personal note, um, a good surgical outcome for our very own Flame Gremlin, mm -hmm. who's going through some stuff. So we're wishing that that just goes super smoothly and it recovers fast and everything is the best possible thing it could be. Easy peasy. Easy lemon peasy squeezy. lemon squeezy. Would you like to know the paint colors we're using today? It'll help you paint along if you know the colors. Would I? Let's, let's find out what they are. Let's look at the palette. Uh -oh. Palette cam. Light. So I have burnt sienna, phthalo green, cad yellow medium, I all titanium white. Also later I'm going to put out Mars black. I probably will get some ultramarine blue involved somewhere if I need to tone my white a bit. And then I've got quinacridone magenta and cad red. Now I'm going to put these to the side because I don't need them right now. That's not necessary. We do break down these lessons into steps. Those steps then are time stamped and then those steps and time stamps match what's called a mini book, which is a written out version of this exact lesson comes out a few days after uh, that step by step with pictures that you're going to see us doing during this live show. This makes a huge difference in your outcome of your painting. Someone's calling you. I'll go. Someone check is calling me on Skype, man. It's your mother. My mom doesn't know my new live hours. My mom's calling me on Skype right now. Oh, she is. It is Ginger Cook. And we could be funny and answer, but we'll be good and not. She doesn't know my new hours because I changed my hours. I was on Tuesday and she was on Monday. So she keeps telling people to watch me on Tuesday. And I got to tell her that I'm on Saturday and Sunday at 11 a.m. now because otherwise she's going to keep calling me <laughs> during the live show. <laughs> we talk a lot, but sometimes we miss telling each other the important stuff. Like, I changed my show time and schedule. The moment when she realizes and goes, ooh, <laughs> and then just calls you back later. <laughs> We have a lot of the same viewers, so I'm sure somebody will tease. If you are, tease her on her Monday show. We'll be like, mm -hmm. you called your daughter during her live show on Sunday. We'll have and to return the like, favor. Huh? We'll return the favor. Call her on Skype? Right before she No, show they never time. have anything ready to ring. I've tried. Oh. I tried to pounce her and mess with her, but they're always prepared for everything. We'll recruit John Little. So, now that we've 
talked about all the things and you kind of get a vibe of the show. So if you were hoping for a time lapse with piano and you realize this is not that, hmm. this is online art class where I really teach you how to paint, um, we're going to do put up a step one. <gasps> step one? Step one of Butterfly and Red Flower. <laughs> This is why I let my patrons name these for the mini books, because otherwise everything would be like keywords. Mm. Now, the first part of this painting is going to be actually pretty fun and simple. We're going to put in what's called a ground. And that's because we're going to be doing a bokeh background later. We're kind of just imply some softness in background. To make that easier, I just want to get a general green over the whole canvas. And to get a general green over the whole canvas, I am going to get a pretty big brush. Da -da -da -da. That's going to take me to Ace Hardware later. We might even live stream and you guys can pick out the brushes I'm going to test. But these look like a house brush. They're not. They're a two-inch cutter with a hog bristle. Um, the only issue with these, I'm just going to do just straight green across the whole thing. Just a straight green. I'm adding a little water. Now, the trick is to these, when I dip them, look how barely I dip it. Man, I'm barely getting in there because... Hog bristles hold a lot of water. They're like a little hairy sponge. Mm. Oh, wow. I just splattered green paint all over the wall. <laughs> Yay! And the flamingo painting. <laughs> but it's not on my... Huh? But not on the camera. As long as it's not on the camera anymore, right? Anything can be um, repainted. It is just... much harder to, to get paint off lenses. I'm not worried about how neat this is. Uh, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> because this is a ground, and a ground doesn't need to be very neat. Uh, one of my very favorite painters, Bob Burridge, he, like, wipes it on here with a rag. It's super funny to watch. That, that might save the walls. It probably would, and maybe that's why he does it. Maybe. I can smooth it out a little bit, but what I'm really trying to do is just get an even coverage over the canvas of this paint so that the other paint that I do attach to it later will stick. Will stick. The next thing also, and I'm going to grab a towel from over here, is I'm going to rinse out my brush a little bit, dry, uh, wipe it off. We have to dry this, and we're going to take a picture <gasps> so we can do the next step. So let's Wait. dry it. And... Um, uh, John can talk brush. to you about something. He'll pick the topic because that oh. only panics him terribly. Yep. That's okay. I came prepared with no topic. You came today. prepared. All right, let's dry this real fast. Okay. Aha. Technical failure. Push the button. What? Wait. What? I did not do that. That I, that was not me. Yes, you were. You had the ladder over here and you were yeah, doing no, electronics. No, but I didn't unplug that. I don't know why it's unplugged. It's, oh, it just came unplugged. Oh, you is that all it did? I'm blaming you for nothing? That was, yeah, that was just, it, it just came loose. These are the those floor. moments when people are like, is this show really live? <sighs> Clearly. So, that was just the thing came unplugged. So, not as much. So, clearly, we do this show live. Thank you guys for joining us. We appreciate you guys being here. Don't forget to hit the like, comment, subscribe, share button. Oh, and if you're here in the live, do us a big favor. Come back afterwards and leave a comment because what one of the things that's really hard to do is for us to engage in the comments during when they're in the live chat. So if you come back in and uh, leave a comment after the show, then that makes it a lot easier for Cinem to come in and leave little notes in the comment, which she would love to do more of. And I challenge you to do more of this because she's so into this right now. Like we got the setup so that she can do these video responses. And it's great. Um, it's been really, really good because she can actually respond to some of the more nuance of the questions through these video engagements because she can talk about it. Uh, she can use more words. She doesn't have to be subject to how many characters that she can be captured in. So those videos have been really great. And folks um, seem to be really positive responding to that. So I think that's primarily on Facebook right now. There may be some Pinterest, Instagram action happening. But uh, yeah, definitely a lot of it's happening, I think, on Facebook. And I would challenge you to engage. What did I do on there. Facebook? Um, the video response things. I'm trying on Facebook. The issue is no one can see it on Facebook yet. Oh, where is it that they, you can't see on, it? Here, I'll sh if I can show them okay. um, at the palette. If you put me on the palette cam, I can show them in a minute. I'm handing it. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. I'll show you. 
So if you want to ask me a video thing, I'm gonna go to my little app. See here? This is me answering, where do you get your watercolor paper? If you're on the app, let's see if you can see this. Can anybody see this? There we go. Can you, okay, there you go. See, on the app, if you click my face, it's going to carry me through stories. And it starts with uh, coming soon. And then I can come here and I can reply in story. So I could be like, watch, I'm going to reply to Mona right now. Actually, but John is taking a picture, so I can't. I'll probably reply to Mona for a second because John is like doing 500 things. I could be like over it like this, though. <laughs> Let's reply to Mona, and then she'll get a reply in show. I think Mona deserves that. Is you that a that's... funny thing to do? Okay. Mona's going to get a reply in show. Let's There's reply to Mona in show. Hi, Mona, it's the live show, and I'm replying to you right now because we're <laughs> testing the feature. Thank you so much for asking the question. So there you go. Then I post it, and you can go see that. So you can see. So you can it's ask them here, and if you want to click through the stories, you just click the top bar, so it tells you the different stories. This is the one where I ask people some questions, and then you can click through my answers. That's okay. my whole new weird obsession. Okay. So now you guys like being kidnapped into that weird obsession? Because that's my whole new weird obsession. So while you're putting your canvas surface back on the gripper, gri gri I mean, gri let's go back to teaching an art class instead of explaining YouTube features. <laughs> can I can I give them a step two while you're doing that? Give them a step two. Yes. Step two. I can step two them. Step two. I'm sure my wonderful timestamp team will include cinnamon explains stories. <laughs> you can only see it on your phone, though. You can only see it on the mobile. Yeah. Yeah, it's not viewable anywhere else, which is kind of a thing. Step two has begun. What are we I'm doing? I'm going to put out some two? more green paint so I have enough. Yep. And I want to create a very muted, dark background that's a little bokeh. And to do that, this brush is going to be great. I've got it a little bit damp already, and I'll add some burn sienna into it. See how we do? This will deepen the green. Big brush. You just grab whatever big brush you have. If you need to get it wet, get it barely wet. Yeah, barely dipped it in there and look how it did. Mm. See how wet that is? You don't want yeah. that. Not that wet. Wet, but not that wet. Moist. Moist, but not that moist. As Jay would say. Moist. You got to watch your moistness. So sometimes to control my moistness, what I do is I wipe the brush out. That's very brushy. I'm going to be very brushy. Come through. And again, we're starting with just the green and the brown. And where I have less water, can you see the difference between those two? Mm -hmm. So that's what I want you guys to pay attention to when you're painting, especially if you go out and get yourself a big brush and it's hog bristles. That is the unexpected challenge that you will have. And I'll fix it up here in a second. I'll show you how to fix it if you have the problem. Let's keep going a little bit darker. We're just initially going around a little bit darker. If you ever need to fix it, you can take a dry brush like this and come here and blend out over it. Look. So if you do get that over watery effect, that's mm -hmm. how you would come in and correct that. So the trick is, is trying to get enough moisture on here for the brush to blend but not so much for it to be watery now this seems to be a brush by brush surface to surface paint relationship yeah so brush by brush surface to surface painting relationship and that's what a lot of times you don't get to hear in a tutorial is the fact that there are those kinds of weird variants now in here i want to add a little yellow to my mix taking my cad yellow we're going to add a little bit to the mix. And let's come here and start to brush in right there over on the left hand side, kind of in the upper third, blending. You These make a blends blend. happen when the paints are both wet. Otherwise, I'm doing what's called dry brushing, which is also okay. So this is. Moist on moist. Oh my gosh, say moist again, John. 
but you're 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 working the, the surface is not dry you've got wet paint into wet the surface paint. is wet there's a layer of acrylic on it so here's the tricks to this let me let me give you guys some insider tips here so the reason this technique is working for me and what could cause you trouble at home i paint that surface acrylic right first mm -hmm. that seals whatever i've got going on so if i got a thirsty gesso if i have a problematic canvas i've already addressed that because i put the ground on it then I come back over and I know my phthalo is transparent. I know my burnt umber is transparent. So let's lean into that. And if I can control the moisture, <laughs> moist, if I can control the amount of water in the paint mix. I can keep the paint wet long enough, but not too wet to start a wet into wet blend. And by using a big fluffy brush, I get a bokeh effect. These are all the pieces that are coming together to give me success and things to think about at home. If you have a small brush like this, right? In my strategy, I would work smaller sections, mm. right? And it might take you 40 minutes to get a background with a brush this size. You can do it. Mm -hmm. Just give yourself more time. Expect it to take longer. I'm grabbing some just green here. Expect it to take longer. And that's a, that's a thing because sometimes when you guys are painting along, how could you know all that stuff? You this couldn't. I'm going to grab a little white into this mix here. A little white. And I don't have my wet palette today because I didn't prep a sheet. So I'm going to be misting with my mister. Now I know you've got a, you've had a chance to use a lot of different paint. Yes, a lot of different paint. But uh, have you used a lot of Montmartre paint? I actually like the Montmartre company. Um, I, I haven't too. used their yeah. paint. I've used a lot of their other products. And uh, if you're in Australia, I think for economy, they're your brand. Yeah, I was gonna say because I really like the easels, and yeah, I want to say that I met. They also have education. We did meet him. Yeah, we met, he's we super met Mont -Mart. cool. He's yeah, he's super. He cool was guy. at Anamta one year, and we met him. and He was super cool. The other thing to remember is they have a lot of art education for their product. Mm -hmm. They have a channel, and they teach how to use their paint, their product, all of their stuff. And what I liked is that. The owner was totally engaged in the experience of the painter and the artist. Yeah. So I, while I can't say for sure what the quality of the product is, the quality of the people seem to be good. The products that we've tried, though, were good quality. Yes. Yes. So if you have tried Montmartre paint and you liked it or however you felt about it, leave a comment in mm -hmm. the description below so somebody seeing this video might get the benefit of your advice. That's that what they were asking. That could be really helpful for them. They were asking about Montmartre stuff. Yeah. And they were asking, so you can help answer if you've tried the paint and you liked it. I, I love the easel, mm -hmm. you know, so, and I like the channel. It kind of like didn't keep, get kept up by the YouTube algorithm. Yeah, it's, it's a good channel. YouTubery is tough. <laughs> the algorithm is brutal and there's like new stuff coming on all the time. And sometimes it pushes down these great resources. I'm going to put out a little more of my colors here. I'm going to put out a little more of my green. All right. And I'm going to put out a little more of my brown. So at this stage, can you see how our background is just a little um, more robust? It doesn't look as like streaky and thin as the background did. And now we're starting to get some distant yep. little bokeh. But now this is green. To, is this, are we getting close to going on to the next step here? This is a step here. This is a step here. Okay. So we'll take a picture and then I'll give you a step. Okay. Take a picture and give me a step and I'll talk to everybody. Yeah, you know, uh, if actually just in general, if you're in Australia, um, share uh, your art stores that you like and the stuff that you like. The other company I like from there is Matisse Derivan. They're really uh, a high-end pro paint. And so, the, and I, as I understand it, they're more expensive in Australia and they get made there than they are in the United States because Jerry's cut a deal with them and buys a lot. And so you can actually buy Matisse in the U.S. sometimes cheaper than in Australia. In fact, I have purchased Massis Theravon, which is a very good pro paint, um, at the cost of Liquitex Basics when it was on a sale. I did a cost comparison. I was like, oh my gosh, during the sale, this is the same price as Basics. What? That's not an all the time thing. I'm just saying as an artist, you got to be smart and shop those sales. Now, are you... Are we approaching that step three place? But definitely put on a step three and I'm going to do the next layer. I'm trying to decide if I want to dry that layer. Is it, does it need to be dry? 
I think it might be for the next one to go on. I think I want to dry and then a blend because what happens here, let me explain why I want to dry it. Give me a step and then I'll explain why. Okay, your step's okay. there. Step's there. Woo! So the reason I want to dry this is, is that I am going to lean again into the transparency or the nature of the phthalo green, but I want things to glide over the top and uh, not be tacky, right? There's, a, there's dry, there's blendable, there's weird tacky, and tacky does not blend. Wet blends, <laughs> tacky know, does not blend. I was always told that as a kid about my clothes, that it, tacky it, doesn't blend, but I did not <laughs> listen. I was like, no, these checker plaid and like neon all go together. Yeah, well, you know <laughs> what I'm saying. You know, because you got your checkered vans with your neon OP shorts. and then, I mean, like, just a to put context, shirt. if you're new here and you're like, why all this? Because I want to. This... It's really all it is, because I wanted to. It, it doesn't go any deeper than that. I don't have like some big black plan. I'm like, because it was bright pink and I loved it. And then I was like, oh, because all the things like, yeah, so because I want to. Cause... Let's sip my coffee. Cause Everyone yeah. take a minute and be mindful of how you're feeling. Is your body posture good? Is your neck good? Are your shoulders hurting? Um, at, I know at home you may have painted a lot longer in the background because you're using a smaller brush. So be mindful hmm. of how your body feels. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Release any anxiety. This is art. It's very easy. It's doable. I've got you. You follow along with me. You're going to do better in this painting than you expect. Remember not to put crazy hard expectations and pressure on yourself. This is your first painting. You don't put pressure on yourself like it's your hundredth painting, right? First time you ride a bike, you don't expect yourself to be a BMX racer. Mm -hmm. You're like just hoping to stay on the seat. So let's remember if it's your first painting, just try to learn the materials and learn about the layers and realize that you can. <sighs> I like to do the deep breath. It helps. I I'm like to put to my breathe coffee there. To let's breathe. talk about this next layer, blendy blend. Okay. I'm going to start here, and I'm going to use some blending tools. Are you? I tool. am, and I'm trying to decide which blenders I want to use if I have any of my, yeah, I've got one of my, I've got some Ultima varnishes out, and I think I've got my, I'm seeing which blenders I have available to me. I usually have two or three in the bucket. Who knows where the other ones are? So these are synthetic and filament. They're not a natural filament. I like this one the best. This actually says ultimate varnish on it. It can be a little pricey and the feral does come loose. I like the one from Artist Loft and I also am okay with this one. They just both carry a little more water than I prefer. Mm. I'm going to get a little bit of the yellow loaded up in here. I'm going to add some more little background detail. It doesn't carry as much water as the hog does, which is nice. So I can get some of these little I'm trying to change my direction. There's a little curve to my stroke. Um, a lot of people do like to use makeup brushes here. And I would say that it's a makeup brush by makeup brush thing. Because it's interesting. Cinnamon has painted with coffee and sticks. Yeah. So you, you can, can paint with anything. Yeah. But you've got to get familiar with it. I am still barely dipping in the water. See how little I'm dipping? I see the dip. The dip is, the dip is key. <laughs> don't, don't mess up your dip. I'm coming here in the corner. Now you're kind of seeing all of that blending and unfocus kind of really happening here. We've got to get depth in a couple places. Depth is important in an out of focus background where we're trying to say something is out of focus in the background and something is deeply in focus up front. Got a little water there? Yeah, every once in a while I gotta get a little water to improve the flow and the softness of the brush is allowing me to soften what's happening here. So you know, how much moisture in your brush is relative to the brush and the paint? 
So what, what I talk about a lot is that well, I'm about to talk about it now is the mm. Goldilocks zone. Ooh. Every surface, every brush, every paint has an area where it's ideal. So every paint has too much water, too little water, but it's all different for each line of paint. Every brush has too much water, too little water, but it's all different for every brush. And the same is true of every canvas. Every single material, whether it's craft paint, whether it's pro paint, it doesn't really matter. It all has a Goldilocks zone. And what your job is, is to learn your materials and find out where that Goldilocks zone is so that you get the most out of them as you work. So in the Venn diagram of painting, we have brush, paint, surface, and moisture. Yeah. you got to be in the a middle. I added white to that color to lighten up this corner here. I just don't, didn't want to not mention that. So I'm going between the phthalo green, the burnt sienna, cad yellow, and then adding the white. Oh, there's a comment. Hmm. I love your professionalism. Oh, thank you. Oftentimes we think of cinnamon being very, you know, uh, loose or ad hoc with this, but she has a lot of really designed planning behind this stuff. <laughs> she works really, really hard to make sure that there's a plan to this <laughs> chaos. My kids now are like, I don't want to be a YouTuber. It's too much work. <laughs> So I appreciate that. I do. Thank you so much. So have you seen how I've gone around here and created these little zones of lack of focus? This is very helpful to that. That's me. Zones. I don't use goat because goat breaks in acrylic paint because, and it will, it gets brittle and breaks in acrylic paint uh, more so than even hog. And also because it holds too much water. They it's were the saying, only reason that I don't. You could, but that's the only a, reason that I don't. Yeah, there was a lot of goat comments about just that in in chat right now oh are they having those problems with their goat mm -hmm. some yeah prefer, goat, goat is what, what they prefer hog over goat uh yeah hog over goat ho goat is fantastic for oil painting and can be nice for watercolor painting and certain type of techniques uh the ph of acrylic tends to break natural hair and hogs a little more resilient than goat goat will definitely become more shattery as you paint with it holds too much water and it'll leave like lots of little hairs once it starts to break. And there really isn't anything you can do about that. It's just the nature of the paint. All Blame right. On the I've rinsed this out and I've dried it and I'm going to put it aside to think about what it's done. And I'm going to grab a bright. That's it's not really important which bright. This one just happens to be a Raphael number 20 textura. But let me point out something real obvious. This is an Art Sherpa number 10 Goldilocks. Mm. See how similar in size they are? They also, look, similar. even among these brights, look how long the difference is between the length out. When I was designing these brushes, I asked them for a shorter length out. Next brushes I do, I'll ask for a shorter length out. But I'm okay with this, and we're going to do this, and it's going to be fine. It will work. I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet and come more into the yellow of this mix, which is still playing between the burnt sienna, phthalo green, and cad yellow. I'm using a bright because I want to kind of imply a big leaf off here to the corner. Bring that down. And I'm going to just very carefully, well, not very carefully, I'm going to just quickly brush in the structure of this leaf with this bright. The reason I'm doing it fairly quickly is I'm going to have to blend the edges of it you could do this leaf with say a round two so we're loosely sketching this in it's very much the color of the background isn't it I can add a little white Put into this yellow green for the tip. Oh, there you are. I may have to look over your right shoulder to get better view. Okay, of that. can I come over to the left? Yeah. All right, I'll come left. So I'm going to come here, and I just want to make sure that I've got this nice kind of like little leaf tip. And we're going to. Brush it out here, and I'm going to want to 
get a soft focus. That's what I'm going to be working on. I'm going to pull my brush marks in. Get a little red and, I mean, yellow and green here. Here's the center line. Come in the center line of this leaf with a bit of green. Now we're kind of like just out of focusing that in. Yeah. And the reason we're doing it this way is we want to give it the effect of being not quite totally in focus. That makes sense. Come in here and load up some paint and brush out. So we're just kind of implying the texture or the structure of that leaf. A little green on there, pulling it out. Come back, a little green in there, pulling it in. But this is a light green. I've added yellow to the green. And then I can pull it in from there. I'm pulling, coming in towards the center. See the curve I put on the stroke? See, I'm curving in. Yeah. Coming into the center of that leaf. On the edge here, curving in. It doesn't look bad. No. We're getting a little out of focus leaf happening there. You want just a little bit of structure. Now, that doesn't mean that I won't come in with a number four round. This one I think I let paint dry on. Did you? Yeah, I'm going to have to give it a spa. <laughs> <laughs> no. It just needs a spa later. So what happens is sometimes you let paint dry on your brush and it'll, uh, you've got to take it out with a little cleaning surface that I like to do that I call the spa. Number four round. But just a smidge, guys, at the tip here. Did anyone identify this butterfly? No. But I'm sure somebody will. <laughs> we just want a little bit of that leaf in focus. Not totally in focus. And I can still come back with a damp brush. One is damp. One is damp. There you go. And soften this so it's not... See that? Yeah. So that's a little thing that I'll play with is the softening of that and then... Making sure that tip is there. So just get that in. You can also put in a little structure a couple other places. So I'm going to take some of my green and my yellow. And I'm going to come here and arc out a line. You see here? And brush that in because I don't want it to be in focus. Real no, loose, I'm... but it's just a little bit of a structure. If I need to, I'll put out more green. Personally, I think it's very important to leave zones of unfocusedness. Mm -hmm. That's where I live. <laughs> they let your eyes rest. Let your eyes rest. I added a little white and yellow to this. I'll just come right here. And then I'm dry brushing as I come forward, and that helps it also be kind of loose. That dry brushing is another way to just kind of create a little bit of a unfocused zone. I can get into my green and brown again, making kind of a darker color. And see how I kind of can paint this negative space in to show a little bit of that leaf. I'm just using a bright. Oh, you're giving some contrast to the leaf. Getting some contrast in right there. Because it does. It has a little bit of contrast. Not too much down here. And we definitely want more yellow down here. We're just trying to imply a little bit of what's going on. I'm going to get a little more brown into that green. 
to deepen it. So it's a bit of a step here. Probably, in some ways, the most challenging part of the painting. Hmm. Butterfly is pretty easy. Flowers are pretty easy. But getting something out of focus. I have to remind people that. I have to work so hard to stay out of focus. <laughs> people don't take We're gonna me seriously. We're going to continue to add phthalo green and burnt sienna around here, deepening this color. I mean, in a world of autofocused cameras, my bokeh, yeah. A little more green in that than I used. That's okay. It's art. It's art. My level of distraction. Is it art? Yeah. Out of focus. So we're just making sure that we've got a little bit of value and base. This works the way we're doing it, even if you've got less expensive paint. Now there's Even a if lot. your paint is thin because the layers build up. This particular technique depends on paint transparency. Some techniques depend on paint opacity. And if it's an opaque technique and you've got student paints, chances are it's going to be really challenging. If it's a transparency technique and you've got student paints, it's just layer intensive. Now, there have been so many good questions about paint. Oh, I'd love to answer them and we're at a step where I could. Well, I was going to say, it's going to be kind of hard, also hard for me to go back and catch all of them. So I was going to ask if some of, them, some of the folks might leave them over there in that comment section so that you can go make video responses. Well, about it, on the stories. I can't the stories. get, there you go. I have asked YouTube to make it where I could do a video or picture response to comments just on the video. But all they've given anyone is the story video response. But I'm so excited about my story is going to be like 50 sections because I'll just answer questions in there all day. Story, 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 story. Oh, let me get this off. That's a nice out of focus background. There we go. Uh, Windsor Newton is kind of a, I think the Galleria acrylic is actually better than the Windsor Newton. I think what happened is Windsor Newton has uh, Change direction several times. If you buy watercolor from Windsor Newton uh, that's really old, uh, like on eBay, you'll notice that the colors are definitely different than what you get now. And I, I can't say now I feel is like an improvement over what it was. I think Windsor Newton has one of the most interesting and storied paths of any company. The only other one that rivals it is Sennelier, which I also paint with. And then on a modern level, what ri rivals it is Golden. Golden has really quite an incredible story and background. They all have, st like, just be true, honest. Not all. Every not a paint no. story. <laughs> yes, all of them really do. All paint makers are kind of on, on a base level insane and wonderful and magical. And on some level. On some level, they're just wonderful creatures. If you want to learn how to make paint, I'm going to be teaching you that soon. Ooh, that's Ooh. right. You are. So should I give them a step while you're strapping that give in? Give me a step while we're strapping it in, and we're going to start putting i got to dry this as well before the next thing because I want to do, do a little sketching to know where it's in. Listen, guys, if you don't draw, just use the traceable that's provided on the website. If you draw a little bit, um, we do a grid after this on the mini book so that you guys can get that. So you don't have to do those things. How are you all doing today? Dry. Mm. Make sure you feel okay. Mm hmm Oh, you know what else you need to do while you're drying? You go ahead and dry that. I'm going to give them a quick, quick little thing. Okay. I got a thing. I got another. Check this out, guys. Right here. Go. Boy, sh she's, oh, she's like, coffee me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, don't forget, if you want to sign up for our text message notifications. Now, right now, we're out of texts because we just had acrylic April. So it'll renew very soon and we'll have a whole bunch more texts that we can use. And when we do, you can sign up by sending a message to 33222. The message you need to send is the Art Sherpa, all one word, and we'll get you uh, text message notifications. Also, check out our website because theartsherpa.com is going to be going through a lot of transformations depending on when you are in time and space. You may be already experiencing some of these changes. So tune in to the website where you can find information how to tune in to the Roku and the SMS and all the other cool stuff. So, information you might information. like. Information.
All right. Oh, I like its little. Off. See, doesn't it look a little blurred? It uh, it's as out as fo- out of focus as I am. <laughs> I'm sure he's not out of focus. A little <laughs> he sharp. just wants to be outside with his little RC car. Meow. <laughs> he's been into that lately. Now for the next part, I want to place in my subject. That's what the painting is about, and this painting is about this butterfly sitting on red flowers. To do that, I need to kind of give myself a sense of what space in the canvas does it take up so that when I'm applying paint, I know where to put it. And I like to do those preliminary thoughts with chalk because chalk goes away easily with water. Here are some thoughts on this, though. If your paint is still wet and you press in hard with the chalk, it's not going to go away. Um, So you definitely want your painting to be dry before the stage. Some things I'm going to think about. I think the butterfly is mostly centralized here towards the middle. The wing comes up almost to here, and the bottom wing is probably at least down to here. So he's he's a big focused part of this Mm. whole piece. I'm going to kind of centralize his little head here. I'm going to give a talk about his little head. He's got a little bit of a body. A little cone of butterfly space. How much space that takes up. Really tells me a little bit about what I want to do. And the size of his wings. If his wing stops up here, I might want to actually move him down some. So his wing space can be bigger. I want him more focal. I've got that little line there. Again, you can use a traceable. You don't have to go through the freehanding part of this. You do not have to draw to paint. I am showing drawing, and I encourage you to learn drawing because it's fun, but for no other reason than it's fun. Not so you can be a real artist. That's not how art works. You're a real artist the minute that you paint. Now, I guess this is a, uh, uh, Amy was saying, a cep- cephalomorpha raflocera. Really? Which is a sky shark butterfly a sky shark <laughs> what 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 i don't think that really is what <laughs> is it no but raf uh Seshlamorpha is what is so how john said say- shark so you can put up the shark emoji it counts for game it does john's face shark emoji counts Shef- for game Sheflamora is how you say the shark species and Reflocera is how you say the butterfly species, so I think it's Seshlamorpha Reflocera. I'm probably butchering that, but you know. I mean, probably, but that was it's funny a for shark. a second. I was just like, <laughs> sky if shark. this is a sky shark butterfly, oh my gosh, that's the best thing ever. <gasps> best thing ever. Spotted it's the best sky shark. day ever. Have you thought more about drawing lessons? I like doing the drawing lessons. I do them a little bit on Facebook on occasion, and I enjoy doing it. The thing is, is when I'm drawing, I'm in a weird mental space. I'm a thinking. Mm. And so sometimes when you're thinking, one of the first things that I really struggle with on YouTube was this idea that, let's put a lesson here. Um, you know, I had to talk and paint. Woo! Talking and painting is no joke. Maybe it was Luella, Luella uh, who said it was the lesser spotted shark butterfly. It is? No, it's it's actually a uh, white pe- peacock butterfly. Oh, white peacock. That makes more sense. It does. It would it's, be cool if they called a butterfly a shark butterfly, though, because let's be honest, that would be... The spotted sky shark? Super sort of incredibly awesome. <laughs> All right, so he's kind of taking up this space here. There's some little detailing about him that I, I do want to think about. I might kind of shorten his little head here some. That looks pretty good. Now we've got kind of up through here and coming off the second is this little stem. And the stem's got some flowers. I've got a flower and a structure that I'm going to put down here. And I want that flower to take up about this much space on my surface. Then I've got... A little flower that's going to take up about that much space on him. Because he's butterfly. 
And then a little, another little flower area that's going to take up about that much space. And I just let myself know, like, how much space do I want this to take up? So that I'm thinking about that when I'm pulling in the structures and stuff that I'm going to be painting. I might come in here and give myself some more thoughtful lines, like his back wing has some little scoopies. And I might remind myself that there's some scoopies there and I might give myself some scoopies as well here. Scoopies are the way that the wing kind of points in and that'll help it feel a bit like the butterfly that it is. And you can see I can erase with my finger so that's good to make sure that I've got nice line on his wing. And his wing is a little bit out here and it has a little dip in and comes out again. So I definitely don't want to lose that, that little rounding dip and out again. And I need to come down and make sure, I'm going to step back now and make sure that, and one thing I can do is if I go like this, I can check my symmetry. Mm. So by looking at my canvas from a new perspective, I can make sure that this wing, they're not twinsies, but they're definitely like bald ones. So close enough. Hmm. <laughs> Somewhere there's a bald one painting with me going, what? <laughs> Rude. <laughs> but it's true, dude. Oh, I think Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live have ha has managed to capture all the Baldwin jokes. I don't think we could cover any new territory. I don't think I could do anything compared to Saturday Night Live. I watch them and they are so clever. Incredibly talented. Yeah, so talented. So clever, clever people. All right. So I feel pretty happy with the structure of that butterfly. Let's call this a step. <gasps> a step. Now in your booklet, the step... Uh, You'll have uh, the traceable, and if you did the traceable, you might have more detail. If you're not aware about your traceable, your printer has a tool called the poster feature. And if you use that, you can size the traceable to a 16 by 20 final size, and it will posterize it, and then you just match up the little um, marks on it. And if you don't know how to use it, chances are if you go on YouTube and search your printer, make and model and year and poster feature, Somebody has made a tutorial about it. I'm not guaranteeing a good tutorial, <laughs> but a, another thing I often find if I su search my printer and I go online and I ask a specific feature question, I can usually find a place to download the manual for free. And often the companies now have video tutorials. So never feel, I just, I'm sharing this with you because there was a time when we didn't know things. And if you didn't know how to do something, you either had to find somebody that knew how to do it, or you had to go to a library and look it up. And right now, if you just think a little bit uh, creatively about your Google searches, chances are you can find the resources that you need and you don't have to wait on anybody to solve the problems. And it doesn't matter how young or old you are, this works for everybody. Right? I remember the first time I realized I didn't need John to help me fix the dishwasher or get the door unlocked. <laughs> I mean, I called him up. I'm like, I don't need you anymore. Did you know it's all on YouTube? Still has to get my coffee. I'm going to put this back on. I'm going to sip a couple more times. And we're going to talk about what we're going to do next. What are you going to do next? Flower. Sh you know, I thought the irony of all of this, what, that, you know, you heard of um, that flower lady's fingers? Mm hmm This flower I hear is called the surfer's toes. No. And you're not going to get me anymore. The sky you're butterfly. You're punking me, and now I know you're punking me. Totally and loves. you are not going to get access to punking me anymore. Because now I know. It's and once once I know, you can't change it for me. <laughs> Surfer toes. You guys are allowed to punk me. Feel free anytime. He's not allowed to punk. Okay, me. you need a step. I I need a step, and I need a sip of coffee. So in the next part, I'm going to choose to do these flowers. And the reason I'm going to choose to do the flowers is because they're kind of further back than the butterfly, and I can paint them in early and really work out the structure. And that way, I'm not trying to work around some delicate work I did on his wing or some other element, mm. which can be a little frustrating. It's not right or wrong. It's just a decision that I make as an artist to make my experience easier. 
It makes sense. You know, sometimes you might want to do something different. Oh, man, I'm missing the wet palette today. I'm going to put out some cad red paint. A little more green, a little more brown, a little more yellow of the colors that I have. You can see today, this is not the, uh, this is not the level one. This is the level three artist loft. And I do like the level three artist loft. Hmm. Not so much the level one or two, but the three I do. The three I very much do. I'm putting out my colors again. And we'll go over the palette uh, once I get this all out. Yeah. That you guys can know what the colors are and why they are. So, intrinsically, mm -hmm. do you think that acrylics or oils or watercolor are better for real life painting? Real life painting? I think acrylic. Acrylic, yeah. Yeah, um, and here, or, or watercolor. And, and the reason I. Though there is, okay, so this is an for real life painting, like painting outdoors real life or just painting things that are real life? I think day-to-day -day painting. Day-to-day -day painting. I like watercolor. I think it has, you know, your initial investment's kind of a weird thing to reconcile, but once you're in and you have your brushes and your stuff, I think it's the kind of uh, media you can sit down and do very, very lightly and get in and out in 20 minutes. Um, I think acrylic takes a little more investment, but at least it dries. I think the oil requires the most of the painter, uh, just in materials, in, in time, in planning, and concepts, and in techniques learned. I think they're all equal value. I think encaustic is super hard. <laughs> there are things that are harder <laughs> to do because the technique requ requires more skill. Yeah. And that's because of, like, the surrounding chemicals. Because yeah. at some level, art is chemistry. But it is absolutely incorrect information that oil is toxic. Oh, yeah, no. That is, there are products, cheap, ridiculous products in oils that are toxic. But good oil products, Chelsea Classical Studios practically could be potpourri for your home. It's amazing. Mm. You're thinning your What's, paint with lavender spike oil. Yeah, that How lavender good stuff. could that smell? Yeah, wow. so good. It's so good. I use lavender spike oil in my Sherpa soap. Because it's amazing. It smells good. It does smell good, but it's a very specific product. So, you know, the thing to think about is like, what kind of artist are you and what kind of art experience do you want to have? And I should do a whole video on like the different materials and what kind of artist What kind of artist materials. are you? Yeah, because everybody's different. Or maybe it's your art mood for that day. I have pastels too. I feel like pastels have their own kind of like, bohemian free spirited dust colored on my face free so yeah i'm fine i have feelings on these issues <laughs> <laughs> powering up with coffee i'm gonna put in my stem first i just okay. want to see it i am gonna use a little black in this one mix so i'm going to take my phthalo green and burnt sienna i've switched to my cat's tongue number eight just because it gives me good line is really what it is. And I'm going to add a little black to this mix because I just need a deep, deep color. And the stem is almost, in some sense, kind of black. So I'm going to come here. And just kind of bring this down and bring a stem down. There we go. The line off the canvas. Woohoo! I'm not going to do much more at this moment. I'm going to put this aside, yeah, rinse this out, and I'm going to start kind of painting in some of the flowers and some of the little objects that are around and then I will connect all of that with stems. Hmm. I'm going to take a little of my cad red and my quin magenta and mix them together. They're wonderful. And to deepen it, I may put out my uh, ultramarine blue at this stage. Why ultramarine blue? 
because uh, it'll make a nice purple with the Quinn magenta, and that will give me a kind of a darkened paint. See? Oh. I could use dioxin here as well. And if you want to learn more about that, you should watch the video on the split color palette primary. <laughs> you really thing. should. Let's deal with this petal right here. And kind of curve a little stroke in. It's a little bit facing us. Mm -hmm. It's in perspective. It won't really seem like what it is until we get it in relationship to the other petals around it. So it's probably the most annoying and yet challenging petal we have to cope with. Coming kind of off of that and out. Perhaps this petal. And you can see how the outer edge of my chalk gave me a sense of scale. That's all I'm doing is just playing with the sense of scale. And we're just blocking this in initially. These flowers are very big in our canvas. And that's that basic shape of that flower. I'm going to keep pulling out a little of my Quinn magenta. I definitely will get a little of my ultramarine blue. And let's talk about some of the shapes that are here. We have a little round bud shape that's coming off here. I'm tucked next to it as well. It's nice. Out here, we have a nice little round bud shape. Mm -hmm. He's got a little friend, a little bigger, and maybe pointed out there. And so you can see why I, I love this red flower with this butterfly, the red and the green. Mm -hmm. Really made for some very dramatic composition. I'm just doing a touch and pull stroke. I'm using my quinacridone magenta, my cad red medium, my ultramarine blue. I'm loading my brush. I'm putting on both sides. Let's kind of make a small little one here. These have different sizes and some somewhat different shapes and the reason that there is somewhat different shapes and sizes is because some of them are newer and so we want to make sure that we're honoring that i believe that is the cluster that is there Let's keep into our dark flower. The flower underneath its little face is maybe starting here, mm -hmm. about a finger away from the butterfly's face. So I'm going to give myself a nice petal, upward petal. These have that nice kind of teardroppy shape. There we go. Nice scale. Again, our circles sort of help us think about, well, how big is it? This is how big it is. I can then kind of say, all right, I've got a petal here. This is a star-shaped flower. It's generally a five-leaf flower that makes a star, even if the petals overlap each other. The overall shape is a star. I've got to make sure that I kind of get that talked about in there. Little Quinn, little ultramarine. Now, I may take out some of my chalk to get the shape in correctly, and that's okay. 
right? I can put my chalk back. I just want to make sure what's showing of the flower feels correct to me. And I always put his little face back. And I really don't need to paint, like if I wanted to come back and be like, okay, I got that brush stroke in. And while it was all still wet, kind of take that back. You can see that I can't. So, not really a problem. If you want to. You don't have to. If you wanted to take it back. If the canvas underneath is dry, you can remove it, no problem. We have another little flower down here. We can't really see its center. It's sort of open in perspective. So we have a petal that comes here and a petal that comes out here. We've got a pretty slim one here. And then we've got kind of this little round shape there. It's going to be opening in that flower. Just putting those petals in there. Yeah, just placing them where it feels like they would be. Where it would attract the butterfly the best. Yeah, it's pollinator. I mean, these things are made to attract their pollinators, so it never hurts to be thinking about that. I'm going to put one of my little flower buds over here. And there's a one here. One's maybe facing right here. Man, these paintings get so, you know, this under, under stage is, a little, is dark. Yeah. So I always, I'm always like, I worry that I need more light, but it's not. It's the, it's the, it's the darkness of the paint. It can be, right? Like at this stage we are. Yeah. At the under coating paints, it's like, ooh. I think like an orchid, sometimes these these other structure are as important to me as maybe the flower itself. All right. That is the flowers loosely put in in the stem. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a good stage because that's a lot mentally to take in. We'll come back and resolve these out more and I'm going to sip some coffee. You do that. You know, I was I was uh, chatting away with folks here. In chatty, the, chatty. And we were talking about good ways to explore to find how art, how different uh, artists use materials and things and going to museums. And I was going to say that oftentimes small towns have museums that you don't think about. Yeah, they Humble do. had one. Kingwood had one. They were Definitely all Definitely in your area, uh, do searches for a couple of things. You're going to uh, search galleries because galleries are often in your area and they have little shows and events and they love support. A great way to see it search art leagues uh oftentimes there are art leagues or art organizations in your area and they provide courses and opportunities to socialize and a chance for community if you're into watercolor you got to join the watercolor society that's just you got to if you can and they have tons of amazing courses with some of the most incredible artists you've ever seen um definitely hit your museums check out online resources like this is colossal that's an amazing resource for just seeing what's happening out in the art world right now of a variety of different types of artists. I think it's incredibly well curated, much better than Bored Panda. This is colossal. I love them. Um, so you can go online. A lot of museums, because of the pandemic, have opened up virtual exhibits and they have gone through and 3D filmed everything and you can pay for the like guided tour. So you can travel the world there is a new service, which is an art walking tour that you can book a virtual art walking tour and they take you live around, you know, Florence and, 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 and Madrid and all the cool little art places. And they'll take you on tours through the museums as well. So, and I don't think those businesses are going to go away when the pandemic's over. To be real honest, I think those virtual tours are going to keep going. Now, while, they're while a good idea. 
Yeah, no, while you're bolting it up up there, mm. I'm going to give I'm the... I'm going to sip it before I bolt it. I'm going to give the... Sip it before you bolt it. ...point of view to this. And that's what I, where I feel like, yeah, 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 all the virtual tours are great, but it cannot replace going and seeing these surfaces in person. No. Yeah. I had no idea how much different things looked in person than they do in even the best of photographs. Oh, photographs don't capture the no. Just it's so incredibly different. But this ca this person. does this captures this beautifully. You yeah. should believe everything you see online. Woo! Woo! The Sherpa files where we reveal the secrets of look. Whoa, we zoom in. What happens? Put these flowers in thoughtfully. <laughs> you can see. Look, there are dots. Oh, oh, no, you can't see anything because I went too fast. There are dots everywhere in the surface. That happens. It really does. That's not I'm just taking people. the cad red and the quin magenta, and now I'm going to come here and oh, we kind of really. Oh wait, is this a step? Did we step? You didn't step it. I didn't step yet. We were talking. You went step to painting. It. You were just like step skipping it. the things. I'll go back and do it again. Step S it. Step it. Step it. Step oh, it. No, this and this. You went this. Yes. And this. And this. Yes. Now See? I'm going to go back to this. Now you can wait. Let it, give me a second so they can find this. You're going to do this. See, this is step six. We're going to do this. Got to, like, timestamp it and do our thing. Okay, now you can go. That's a good one. Hello! <laughs> you just... All right. To Cad Red and Quinn Magenta. I'm a very serious art teacher. I take myself so serious. I'm here in, you know, deep in the red of these. It's still Quinn Magenta heavy. You know, some of them, they're a little more rounded or. It's fun stuff. Maybe I come here and really get like some ultramarine blue on it. Try to get this deep purple color and let's. You know, really exaggerate perhaps some of the some of the color. Can't imagine the color being exaggerated. <laughs> My little so I'm down here and do kind of a similar thing. We're just We're gonna going to make sure that our our little petals down here, they've got some, they've got some contrast. They have some. And those greens are reds. It's the green and red. It's the contrast of each other that's yes. really kind of meaningful. It's very shadowy. It is. So we'll let those have a little rest for a second. Yeah. While they are having a rest, I'm going to take my green and brown together. A little more brown. And I'm going to thoughtfully sort of paint some Connective stems to this. Now, if you're like me, watching this, holding your breath. Just going, what do I do next? What's she going to do? Hit the subscribe button. That's what you should do.
<laughs> hit the like while you're there. And the bell, and inside the bell, say all so you can get notified. And then you won't have to hold your breath so much. Because then you'll know every week what I'm going to do. Uh-huh. Mm. We're just making these little connective stem structures. We're just starting to think them in. They're as fun to paint, I think, in some ways as any other part of this painting. And this is a bit of a painting. Like we took on, uh, maybe I should upgrade this to like a three hoop, man. Because mm. I, I decided to get deep about it. I think initially I was like, oh, let's paint it real fast. And then I was like, no, let's go deep. I don't know. The zones of unfocusedness, unfocusedness may have been my favorite part so far. But we haven't gotten to the sky shark, so... I don't know. We'll see. It can be nice to give these things different personality. I can come here and get a little yellow on the mix. Just creating some interest in that stem, right? Yeah. Because the stem is interesting. Stem's fascinating. Can even get a little white over to my magenta here, into my cad red, and a little of the purple. And come here and add some of this to the stem. It's like so you're like, oh wow, there's like there's a lot happening here. Even the stems are very much painted. When you're painting uh flowers or botanicals, you know, especially when you're focusing in, in like this and zooming in, you want to add those little details. They make a difference. Come in and I'll do some sidestep here. So okay. I'm gonna take a, a little of my brown and green, more brown. That's a little more challenging here, like for, on my visualization on the side. So I may have to adjust as I go. But this is the basic kind of construct of. You're just putting a little more stems in there. You're getting all introspective on your stems. I can see it. Yeah. I can hear. Well, wait, especially with me being at the side like this, I've got to think a little bit because I'm not on this in a way that lets me really. Do that as much. Yeah, I have to, I have to really think. Painting they were the asking side. about the various usage of this uh, easel in chat. We were just talking about how you could probably use it for different surfaces like um, boards and things, but it yeah. may require little adapters to well, do that. Well, they have about 50 configurations, but we found some of them we weren't able to make as stable, but we just got it. And we really haven't even talked to the makers of mm -hmm. the easel, so we haven't had a chance to say, hey, you know, what's the deal, yo? But the 
Because we, I, I just purchased it. I'm going to take a little of my purple here. For a lot of the smaller surfaces, we found that uh, taking one of those cool wooden table easels and strapping it to a tripod works pretty good. Yeah, it really does. And all I did was just put what's called a cheese plate on the back of it. When you look it up, it's very intuitive. You'll say, oh, a cheese plate. That's a thing with a bunch of holes, so you can screw it to a easel. And then you screw that to your table easel, and voila, you have voila. a tripod easel. You need like a $10 cheese plate to make that. You know, it's a good idea to, to be thoughtful. I'm going to add a little green in here into my magenta, and it gets me, gets me a very interesting little color. So those then become very, very well thought out little structures. Yeah. A little black and brown here. Putting some. Just crisping up those edges. Looks good. Making sure I've got nice contrast to what's going on. And that's important. Your contrast yeah. is a big deal. I'm going to come up to the top, John, okay. and work on some uh, inner flowers up here. Okay. Um, actually, I'll work on, I'll get all the buds done, and then I'll do the flowers. That seems okay. good. So I'll, I'll start here. A little bit of my Quinn Magenta and my Cad Red and a smidge of white. Going to add a little bit of that twin magenta, cad red, smidge of white around on some of the flowers. Get a little cad red going on the brush, just really bright and saturated. You know, you pop just a little bit of this space. I'm gonna come down here and do a similar thing. That's that. Those those highlights start coming in there with the bright colors. Yeah, we're just painting those and really enjoying them. And I'm gonna come in with a little bit of the red here. That was fun. While that's having a dry, let's go back up to the top. Get a little of my ultramarine blue into this white reflection. So it's not white, white, but it's pretty light. And I'm going to come through here and And come down and hit some of these as well. All right, 
I'm looking back. I'm going to look back at that and just see what the piece needs. Are we happy with that? I feel like I could make them a little more luminous. So I'm going to get my uh, CAD yellow over to my CAD red. Mm -hmm. I'm going to still put some magenta into it. I'm just wanting to. Okay. And come down here. Let's see how that. I oh, yeah. think we can call that a step, and then we'll come in and do the center part of the flowers. Yeah. Yeah. That seems like a reasonable thing to do. Do you need to dry this? I do not. You do not. We can't do. I do not. I do, do need that. to drink some coffee, and coffee. I may need a fresh cup soon. <laughs> Because this is going to be one of those classes where we get into it deep and really paint it. We do that showpiece for our wall. Every once in a while, you know, it's great to do light paintings, and I love to teach those. But sometimes it's nice to also go deep into a painting and, you know, really cover, like, how would you paint paint this? Right? That's wonderful. One-hour lessons are wonderful. I love doing them. I know you guys love doing them. But sometimes it's nice to go deep. You know, be sure, you, like, let me know in the comments. Yeah, I love the deep lessons. Uh, I want to I wanna do more focus lessons where I take it to maybe a few more realistic techniques, more floral techniques, or maybe you're like, no, no, I'll keep it light, whatever it is. It, there's no wrong answer here. Just tell me, tell me. And if you want a video response, tell me under stories. You have to do it under stories, though, because that's the only place I have the respond button. That's a pretty neat thing. There we go. So let's paint in these flowers. Hold on. They wish to be painted in. You cannot paint yet. I can't because I don't have a step. You don't have a step. I don't even know if I'm on... I am. I'm on step seven. <laughs> That's the step you need to see. All right. Now, wait, you got to wait. Tell, tell them this is a step. This is a step. This is a step. This is this not... Is a step. This is not an escalator. This it's, is a step. This is not a parachute. This right. is a step. This is not a skateboard. If this were not a step, you would not be instructed to go check your downloadable mini book and know that all of these resources are available for you to be able to have a better painting experience by oh, sitting. I like and that. <sighs> It'll be a long mini book. <laughs> All right, so I'm taking a little bit of my cad red and my magenta together. And I'm going to come up here and begin to speak about this petal. Now, I may have to get a bigger brush. It depends on how this goes. Sometimes uh, I find that when I'm doing a bigger petal, I sometimes need a bigger brush. I'm painting around the in shadow um, petal. And I may want to come and put some of my green background back. Just to show that there. Get a little of my purple here. A little more purple. Because again, that part of the petal is a little more in shadow, but it does have some black lighting. It's always important to bring. A little of the cad yellow over to the cad red.
Hmm. Just kind of talking about the lighting of this particular petal. Always fun. It seems pretty fun. A little magenta. I'll kind of pink it up. Blend it in a little bit with space. I'm going to stand back and check it out. A little more cad red, kind of central in this petal. Mm -hmm. And as I come down that center, I definitely want to uh, get a little more yellow into my mix. A little more yellow and white. Oh. Making sure that, you know, the edges are good. I can always get a little of my purple and I come into this edge here. And I'm blending it. Is, these are pretty chill transitions, right? Mm -hmm. Very. It's wet. I'm working the next paint layer into it wet. I'll rinse out. Maybe a little yellow white. Look at the center of this. A little yellow. Orange. Come here and say. All right. Center. Is like kind of focus right here. This helps us identify where I want to kind of keep. I'm tapping a little light yellow right here. The focus of that stamens and I'll put the stamens kind of rightward facing and I have to now think about the layering of petals. So I'll take my cad red and twin magenta if I want a little purple I can come right here and And blend that. Let me get over to the side. Maybe I'll think about a little bit about how the layering of each petal is. Look purple right there. Just starting to really look phenomenal. Talk about the shape of that flower. I'm going to get my red and my quin together. Brushing in in the direction of the petal. All right. 
You see? Mm-hmm. Here I might be a little heavier on the Quinn because this pedal's a bit more in shadow. A little heavier on the CAD when the pedal might have more light on it. Here to the outside. But then as I move in, I might add more Quinn. Blending as I go. Brushing and blending as I go. I'm stroking the direction of the pedal. Oh. And brushing and blending as I go. Pretty well. Let's step in. Get a little of my blue on here. This will help me talk about the shadow on the leaf for each yeah. petal leaves. And I can trim that back in a little bit, but I do want that in there. It doesn't have to necessarily be a thick line. It just needs to be a line that we can see. Huh. A bit. Sometimes I will adjust it. Let's do this guy down here. Coming here. More magenta on this particular mix. And then as I come down, I can add a little more cat into it. A little more of the red, cad red here. We're just kind of shaving out petals based on the values of them. Magenta here. Magenta is a cooler red. Hmm. I mean, it has more blue? Mm hmm It has more blue. It's more biased on the little scale to the blue colors than the oranges and yellows. And that helps us also help it feel like it's in shadow a little bit. Okay. Now, we'll call this a step, and then we'll come back and put the finishing bits on the flowers. Yeah where they uh, pop, 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 pop. There you go. Yeah. How you guys doing? <sighs> so that's good. It's a thing, and we've still got the butterfly. It's a project, but it's a project worth doing, and it's one you can do in a few sittings. You remember that um, my speed and your speed are not supposed to be the same speed, um, depending on materials, the conditions of your studio, the brushes that you're using, and your experience. Those can greatly impact the amount of time a painting takes you. A lot of people say that a painting takes them two to three times the amount of time on the video, and that makes sense because even following a tutorial, I usually take a little more time doing a project because I'm trying to see what the person is talking about. I'm trying to see the techniques. So that's a good thing to calculate in. A lot of people like to watch the video ahead of time and then follow along 
in the video uh, later. And that's another reason why it's a good idea to see, it, you know, if you want that extra help to wait for that mini book to come out because you download it, you watch the video, the timestamps are all there. You can find your spot again and you can take the time that you need. Ooh, that's nice. To get the result you want. You don't have to rush through. It doesn't have to be an hour. And if it does need to be an hour, do, do like a Q-tip project. Do something that takes an hour that's very short. Sure. You know, do a 15-minute lesson, and then that, that takes you an hour. That's fantastic. You know, don't try to make a three-hour lesson an hour. Or rush yourself through. That's not going to make your experience super fun. And painting is supposed to be fun. Like, right now, yeah, this is work, but I'm having a good time. Yeah. That's I'm enjoying cool. myself. <laughs> I need to put little detailings. You know what you need to do mm. first? What? Turn around and tell everybody it's a step. It's a step. Step eight is about creating details within the flowers. And that will make them beautiful today. And that's what you need today. to do. Yeah. So we're going to enjoy that process. Now, in that, I think my water is clean enough. I don't need to change it out. I'm going to do a little bit of my quinacridone. And my white. I'm going to come here and maybe a little more Quinn. Going to try to brush in here a little of that pink. Maybe brush in a little of that pink right here. A little white. You don't want that much white, but you do want some in there. I'm going to come down here. Now I'm going to come back up to the top. Okay. I'm going to move a little yellow over towards my red. And I'll wipe off and come in and get some nice red. Into my red. Into our red. Into the red. And into the red. Mm. So we're just popping the flowers a bit, adding yep. some dimensionality and reflection in them. You know, where you'd want it. Come back here with my magenta, just make sure that this part anyway is just looking crisp. All right. Got a lot happening in the centers here that we get to play with, and I am looking forward to playing with them. I'm going to take a little of my yellow. Come here. Mm -hmm. 
the little thought of the little stamens that are above it. Mm -hmm. When I know what little stamens I have above it, I definitely want to take uh, some of my white. It's not fully skinned over yet. That's one of the things about not painting with the wet palette is my paint skins real fast. Mm -hmm. Comparatively. Skin means that the surface of the paint is drying while the underneath is not. Get back and kind of see what I think of that. I'm super happy with that. Another thing that I can do mm -hmm. is I can put out a product called Golden Glazing Medium. Sorry, Cap, I let it clog again. <laughs> the thing that happens. It happens. There you go. So what this does is this lets me create a glaze and it slows down the drying time of the paint. So if I want to take my blue, right, and make a glaze with my ultramarine blue mm -hmm. or my purple, right, I could do that. I could make a nice purple, create a transparent glaze with it. And help some of these objects be even a little more in shadow. You know how we're doing? Mm-hmm. The transparency of it really helps me. Oh. If some of this was in shadow here, or the top of that petal was a little in shadow or underneath here, I can add that color with the glaze and not substantively change the flowers. Mm -hmm. I could put some of the little orange stamens in shadow. See how I can knock those back? Yeah. They're there. But maybe not as bright. Anything I want to change that volume or density or process in, I can do that fairly easily. Guess what? I think we've done the flowers. Yeah, I think so too. I think that's a little finishing touch to that. Now, Ooh. I might want to... That'd be pretty good. It's a good time to kind of clean up some of the chalk lines. Yeah. I'm all right with the stem. You can always take this time if you like anything on the stem that you want to get into. This is that time. I just took a little yellow into my brown just to manage a little more dimensionality. And you can see at this stage, you should be able to like have just a damn finger mm -hmm. to rub off your chalk. Be all it takes. Or a damp brush. I should get it off. So you should be getting those. All right, let's call that a thing, and we'll get a picture of that. Hopefully there's enough difference between... Oh, yeah, that's a definite thing. You know, these flowers in the background that they're pop, pop, popping, and now we can put in the butterfly. The butterfly. Butterfly. All right. Which is like the fun part, right? Butterfly is so fun. Sky shirt. Sky shark, and we're going to just enjoy painting him. I love painting butterflies. I love painting birds. I like painting nature. It's actually very fun for me to paint. I know it's a well-covered topic in art, right, of traditional paintings, but it's one that's well-covered because it's just enjoyable to do. When you paint something like an up-close butterfly and an up-close red flower, you spend a lot of time with those objects. And the way that those objects makes you feel that's how you get to feel while you're painting those objects. It's kind of a nice relationship. When I was young and super serious in my art, I wanted to paint these like meaningful things that helped us, uh, you know, really deal with the way we lived as human beings and, 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 and have us confront what was, mm. you know, needing confronting and all of that. And that's pretty cool. Um, the only issue with it is, is that you're in that emotional state. Not my favorite. 
So as one becomes wiser, one starts thinking about like, where do I want to spend my mental energy today? Now I'm going to um, probably clear off my palette just because everything is skinning. Yeah. And that's just that my studio conditions are dry. And those dry conditions create a scenario where my paint dries too quickly. I'll put out my paint as I go and it will likely um, be Keep fine till the end of the class. I'm going to put out black, brown, yellow, and a little bit of cad red. And I might put out my ultramarine blue. We will see as we go. These are just to create a little orange and, and dimensionality in his wings. Mm -hmm. Definitely put out a nice amount of burnt sand. And we'll go over the palette again. It's not going to be new colors. You're okay. And I'm going to also put out a little of the ultimate, I think, just to have it there yeah. in case I need to tint or tone um, some of the color. All right. Do we need this step? I think we do need this step. All right. So in this step, we're going to be just roughing in his shape, and we're going to be doing that with kind of like a deep brown color. Um, just whatever it feels like his general color is, we're going to rough that in and then build up lighter values as we go. Seems like a good plan. Does it seem like a good plan? Because it's what we're doing. <laughs> I'm going to use my number eight cat's tongue, mostly because I find that it'll be easy enough to paint uh, this image with that. I'm going to take my black. And brown, smidge of white. And we're going to just kind of get him in. Looking really nice with the little... Just brushing that base coat in. Mm -hmm. so that's a little burnt sienna, a little Mars black, and a little titanium white. You know, we've got burnt sienna, Mars black, cad red, cad yellow, altering blue, titanium white. So that's what we're using. If I want to do this wing, I'm going to come in with just a little uh, extra black on that mix. And the reason for that is, is just so that I know front wing versus back wing. It's a small difference. It's just enough for me to know. That's fun. Mm -hmm. Now this wing. And I'm going to do something, guys. I'm going to turn this to the side. You can rotate that surface. I'm going to rotate my surface. You can do that. So I have an easier time uh, weighting the object. Hmm. You're not using your wet palette today, are you? No. no but when, you, but when you do... Yeah, you I don't have this problem of paint skinning. And you reuse the sheets to some degree. I do. I rinse them out and reuse them. Like, uh, I'll do, I try to do clean sheets for the show, but uh, the used sheets I do for, like, when I'm designing out new pieces. Because mm. I don't need to have a completely clean sheet. It's not visually confusing to me in the color. It is nice if you're on a standard stable easel, you just turn your canvas to the side. It's good to get a different perspective on occasion. Just, just that beginning layer. Trying to make sure I'm happy with my wings.
just use a little black here to kind of make sure and then and the rest of the same. Mm. Just goes right in. This is the underwing painting. This is the underwing. This is just the basis of Mr. Butterfly, making sure that this and this are symmetrical enough. Uh, easy to get off on those things. So taking this time to check it and get just a little underpainting in of black and brown and a little titanium white. Gives me nice basis for this natural butterfly's wings. Very nice basis to build up on. When I get him painted in, I'm going to want to dry him and remove my chalk so that visually I can see what my paint marks are and I'm not confused by my chalk lines as part of the composition. Hmm. And just get it all. You're going to dry it right now? Mm -hmm. So while, you're, while she's drying that, I'm going to say the reason that we sometimes talk about heat, not using heat during your hair drying, is because it can cause budget paints to do things called color shift which is where it tends to lighten or darken based on the, the color and the, and the brand. But the color shifts from the wet color to a slightly lighter color, generally speaking, as it dries. So you want to kind of watch for that. And uh, heat can accelerate that. So make sure that, um, yeah, you don't, uh, don't do that. That's about it. Don't use heat. There's your heat Yay. public service message. What? The heat public service a message. A heat public service message, and i got to see if I have any clean water. I do. I'm going to put this aside right here, and I'm going to get just a damp brush. And that's going to let me just take in what his basic shape is so I can come back with my paint. Make sure that I'm happy with it. Some things will happen once I start putting in patterns and things on him. Yeah. There's going to be this inevitable gravity to it, mm -hmm. right? The patterning of his body will really make my eyes notice him in an extreme way. So that is something to be aware of. I'm going to put out some fluid paint. Just to make sure that I've got a little bit out. This is white acrylic in a fluid consistency. You can see it's just thinner than the other white. It gives me a chance to do this. I'm also going to miss my paint so I can avoid skinning. Because otherwise that's a problem. And it's a good I'm going to all begin to paint him in kind of a scruffy brush or what's a hog. Hog bristles are a natural bristle made from the hairs on a pig. Yeah. And they're very rough. They're good for dry brushing and they're good for doing this kind of little creature. Because they'll give you lots and lots of little roughy. Roughy, rough bits. Yeah. So the first thing I'll do is I kind of, the overall, not the deep patterning, but his overall little values that he's got going on. On the wings, he has a bit of a kind of gold. I'm going to add a little cad yellow, a little cad red, and burnt sienna. And that comes back a little bit. There's patterns there, but I definitely want to have that. Maybe a little more red. Ooh, that's looking nice. And then, yeah, we just kind of keep that going. Let's say there's also some here. This is very rough. This is early time.
We're just talking about basic shape. I need to uh, turn it this way just so that I can have some an inch or two in. Mm. No. That looks nice. A little brown and black. I haven't rinsed my brush. I'm going to get my white into it, and that's going to give me kind of the off-white. There are patterns within this, for sure. Patterns within the wings. Patterns within the wing. Those are shark patterns. Shark patterns within the wings. Right now, I'm just getting that general sense of his wing. All right, very dry brushed. I don't have a lot of water on my brush. I'm layering up with dry brushing. It's amazing how fast it starts to butterfly the butterfly. Mm -hmm. And we're just sketching right now in our paint. We are laying the groundwork of Mr. Un Papillon. De Papillon Flip. That's all my mom can say. Like they're French restaurants. <laughs> Great. The butterfly is taken off. Now we're going there. Make sure I'm happy with it. Starting to see the directionality, overall value of things into the butterfly. Back to the side. Now, I am not going to do his center till his wings are done. Hmm. His wings are really my priority at first. I can understand that. I'm going to come into my brown. I get a little bit of my orange color here, but it's my brown. I haven't rinsed out. Right up to where I assume the butterfly is going to be. Mm -hmm. Just adding that value. A little black to it. This is just the shading that he has, the sort of basic beginning of his marking. Let me come to the side here. I'm pulling that out. Oh, yeah. Great how it layers up, right? Yeah. I'm not going to rinse. I'm going to get a lot more white. A lot more white. I don't even know I need the blue. This is incredible. Okay. Dry brushing. Layering up. Let's a lot show through from underneath.
Yeah, where we're at. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rinse out pretty thoroughly. Now. I'm going to do it first in white because I have the fluid paint. And then I'll come back. Uh, oh, man, I don't think any of it's white. I think it's all dark that's in the back wing. So let's thin some black. Thin it, thin it, thin it. Come around in it, thin it, thin it, thin it. Roll your brush. This is a number four round. This, I'm so sorry, I forgot to say at the beginning, it was a number eight hog bristle brush in the Cambridge line. Can't get Cambridge's anymore. You could get this same brush in a Simply Simmons hog. So you're okay there. Don't stress on that. Come along here. Back of the wing. We just know where it is. No. There is a vein. Comes along the back of this wing. Mm -hmm. And ends here. Am I in the way? Mm -hmm. You catch it on the left. Yep. Okay. A little vein here. The veining on the butterfly wings is kind of a whole thing. Did not mean to catch it that thick, but we're going to paint in um, inside these so that won't mess it up significantly. If your line gets a little off of its fine point. Little line right here. And a little line right there. Another little line coming up the wing. And then, interestingly enough, there's a bit of a line coming down. The circulation of a wing is real interesting and often is connected to the patterning of that wing. Mm Same thing, other side. Mm So how are you liking the easel, though, the transformable nature of it? I like things about it. I have some things that I'm still sort of questioning. Working out? Yeah, I'm still sort of, hmm, I don't know. You know, it, uh, it has the difficulty of getting every canvas size in it has been a little frustration, but I'm still not sure it's not operator error. Mm -hmm. So I'm not ready to blame the easel yet. <laughs> that makes sense. Just trying to get these little lines in. Just getting that basic little 
little shapes in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, uh, when I'm drawing, I like struggle with the drawing and talking. Sometimes. <laughs> yes, very much. Very, very, very much. I'm going to try to get this back one here. So there's a back one that comes towards this and then bends the back. That one's not so hard to do. And then there's one that comes here and it's going to center there, but come out here. Let me get those in. And if I get those in correctly, which I don't know I will, but if I do. It looks yeah, like they're going in pretty good. Then what will happen is I'll get that will help enforce the the nature of the patterning of the wing as well. Those patterns are very unique to different ones. It does. It feels like they have, you know, uh, a general marking and general coloring that is consistent. But then, yeah, within each species, there does seem to be a. Kind of general overall. But let's call that a step because that was a lot. That seems like a good thing. Doesn't it? It was a lot. And then we'll come in and kind of start to create really specific detailing to this one. Yeah. I like that. All right. Yes. He's like, look at that camera. He's all pointing at me. Look there. I'm like. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a long time on one's feet, though, isn't it? So that's another thing to think of. When I come off of this class, if you've ever wondered um, what that's like, so one-hour classes are pretty much a non-issue for me to do on my feet. Um, Two-hour classes, too, but when you get to three, you do feel it. We've done some five- and six-hour classes here live. Standing. Sta it was crazy. Standing. Now, sitting. Sitting, you can go all day. Sitting is just like stand up and stretch because you're not supposed to sit all day. But right. standing, I do have, just so you guys know, and I highly suggest this for you at home if you're using a standing easel. I have a gel mat, a chef's mat under my feet. This would be impossible without a chef's mat under my feet, mm. even if I was on carpet. Chef's mat is important. So if you have a standing easel and you weren't aware of that because we never show you my feet, chef's mat. All right, let's put up. Get that one fastened get in, in place. Get it in, get it in. Have this. <laughs> when you put it in upside down, <laughs> you're like, I don't even know where it's, which direction it's going anymore. Okay. So I like to kind of counterbalance these like that and then like that. All right. Let's call, uh, put up a step, and what we're going to do is we're going to put in some more patterning and marking. This is going to be awesome. This is getting close. This is get actually. It you is can getting, see in the little window how yeah. close they are. Yeah, it's very close. I'm going to use the same brush I did yesterday on the flamingos. This is a half-inch grass comb. Mm -hmm. You can get a grass comb at Michael's. You can make a grass comb from a filbert and, and um, <laughs> shears. Snippy, snippy, snippy. But what it is is that there's just a little bit of a hair effect in this. You can keep using the hog brush if that's what you have as well. I'm going to come in and grab a little of my black and brown. Distinctly brown, but I, I, I definitely want to do that here. And I'm going to come in and kind of brush back this little edge that's on the wing. I might rinse out here. And I'll take this and see this little fluid paint? I might get this on here. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and add some other blue to it so it's just not so white. To 
just a bit there. That's kind of nice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Then the next color that's going to come in is that yellow that we had from earlier. Might get some brown into it. Sometimes I might get a little of this white into it as well. Just a little dimensionality can be nice. Brown and black again. Well, I think at this point I'm going to get my brown and black and then come back in. And I create the little scoopy bit. Which is a little, let me come here. It's a little sort of curl. I come down and make like a little column trying to show the little scoop. Mm hmm and I'm going to, from this right here, brush back a bit, just a little. Not much past that. I may come in and get a little of my brown. And I'm going to go ahead and miss this because it's just... Needs a little bit of moisture on it. Maybe a little yellow into that. A little brown again. And then I might get like quite a lot of white. Kind of doing an upward little stroke. Mm hmm back and sort of look at that. It's sort of fun to build up, isn't it? It really is. Grass comb. Mm. That's a tool of choice today. It's a tool I really like. Guess who else makes them? Oh, man. What'd Every time I pull these out, I get these what into do? the paint. They went into I gotta the gotta reorganize my brush bucket. These Simply Simmons makes one. You can get them in every size. So don't feel like you've got to go out and buy like a super expensive brush just to get that done. You know? I'm going to come here and get a little of my yellow red again.
bring it up there into that range, putting them in those different places. A little black and brown again. His wing patterns are really amazing. A lot of fun to do in. Just pulling them along. Now, I like to do this one because then I'll match its mm. sister wing to it. Using your little surface, flipping it up. Yeah, using the little surface flip. But you could just put your canvas on the side. That would also be okay. Yeah. I'm going to take a little bit of my black on here just real quick. I dust out from his wing. We have a dot. A dot. A dot. I'm going to put dot there. Okay. Dot. Mmm. That's a good dot. Then we turn to the side. Actually, let's photograph this and then do the side so everybody knows that it goes. You do that one wing and then match it. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, I think so. We can do that. I think that's the way to go. Just so that you guys have that in your mind when you're painting along about doing the flip and matching each wing to itself, um, sometimes that's a little bit easier to do uh, because, again, the wings are Baldwins, but they're not twins, and I don't have any problem with the Baldwins, so I just... It's a good example of a family that looks a lot alike, but is different. I guess I could have also, was it the Hansons? The Bebop kids. They look, that very similar looking family. There's a definite, I guess the Jonas Brothers too. I don't know. <laughs> Some families have a resemblance. Some do. They do, it's true. Some do. Genetics does that. Genetics. Some families don't do. Some families is like, hmm. All right. So when I have this, then I can turn to the side and match what I've done here over here. Oh, but you've got to do something before you go oh, on. That's right. What are you going to do? Step. Shh. Shh. Step. This is going to have a few steps. Do you have enough steps written up? Yeah. Okay. So this is going to have a few steps. <laughs> Just. It'll be a long time stamping, but it will let you get to where you need to go a little bit easier in the lesson. It'll get you there. All right. So we're going to do a similar thing here. I'm going to go white first, I think. Little black and brown mixed together. Misted.
Mm. Contemplating. Yeah, I'm very contemplative. It is remarkably full of contemplation. Look at you. Ugh. I'm trying to just get the browns through because mm -hmm. that's just a nice one to get through. I have to scoop it with the yellow, I think. One, two, four. I might put my orange through just to get it where it's going to sit and then hit, hit more with my brown and white. Mm. So I'm going to get a little of my red and yellow, make my orange. Just get a little bit of that same color that is up here, mm -hmm. over here. Load up with more reds. I make it dimensional. Pretty cool. Working its way. And right here about mid-wing. Come here. Sometimes I got to be right on it. I try, mm -hmm. I'm trying to do the step left lately, but it's. Oh, no, it's okay. You can just keep doing what you're doing. I can go right around. No problem. I like the full on for everybody. I do. We get all the perspective.
it's really interesting how you can create that texture of the wing with that brush. Yeah, really love that because it does feel a little bit like the scaling of the butterfly wing. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Yeah, both sides. A little bit of white and yellow. Now while I'm here, I'm going to take a little of my white and brown. Pretty light color though. Making sure that that looks. That's good. Gotta look at the perspective on both sides. The butterfly. All right. Oh my goodness. Two wings. Two so wings. Now we've got to do these two. Mm -hmm. Same process where we'll do this side and then this side. That seems about right. Let's call it a step. You think so? I think so. All right. And then we can do the last two wings in a step because you guys now understand the concept of why we're doing what we're doing. That seems good. We'll power through them in tandem without the need to break them down. And then after that, we'll do the butterfly body in the center and any finishing details, which I think should be very good. So this is the butterfly class. Again, that's a grass comb. What could you use instead? You could use a small fan, like a, deep, like a teeny tiny micro fan. You could use a hog brush that's real rough. Sometimes those super cheap messed up brushes in the packages with hog, once you get the loose bristles out by washing them, they make really good texture brushes, like really good texture brushes. So not long lived by any means, certainly cracking to break down over time, but they're really good. And for the couple of bucks, it's amazing what they do. So. Don't feel like you've got to have a thing to get the job done. There's always a way to get the job done. You can find a way. Are you about ready for your step? I think I am. I think I'm about that, ready for my step. I think that you're on a step. I think I'm on a step. Step 12, the two bottom wings. Similar process. A little bit of our black and brown together. Mm -hmm. Black and brown again together. And I wonder if I want to do them like, no, I like them like this. Oh, wait, actually, I want to do them like this. Okay. That'll be easier. I'm going to flip it upside down. That'll be much easier. I can take those wings on from that perspective. I'm going to rinse out and get a little of my brown into that fluid white and make that light, light kind of tip of wing color that we had from earlier. Go into it too if I want it.
So I'm going to take that, those strokes there and make them just a little longer. Right here. Again, just a little bit longer. Was there a difference between a grass comb and a rake? Yes. Huh. Rake is very different. So some brush companies do mislabel. Right? Some, some will call this a comb. This is a rake. This is a comb. Ah. You want this, not this. Rakes are cool, right? But it would make very, I'd have to really work to hide the lines. Mm. Better for like a crisscrossy little, little bit of fussy bit. I'm going to get a little of my yellow here. And it's okay. I'll mist again if I need to. Brown, yellow, and red. No way if I need it. I'll come here and Isn't that lovely. A little more white and yellow. Differentials in the colors. Flip my brush over if I want to hit the other side. One of the reasons why I double load is that I can go uh, two directions. I'm going to get back into my brown. Okay. So there's three tiers of the brown here on the wing. All I've got to do is make sure that I come around and get my three tiers in. Mm. Little red and yellow, a lot more yellow. Pop a little brown into it. Some of this white, loosely mixed, flipped over. Can do a little brush back here. Just a little color mix there. A little mm -hmm. brush back. Now my black and brown and some white. I see you too. I love you too. Hmm. I love you too. 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 I don't have any trees. I don't have any trees. You feeling lonely? Go see daddy. Come here. Oh, she's like, socks. <laughs> yeah. Go get your socks. All right. That's wonderful. Now I'm going to put some of the white in on the wing. Or it's just a little more white. So let's get our fluid white sort of loaded up. I don't mind if there's a little blue into it. So it's not. Super pure white, but I do need it to be light enough to really read as white. Um, a lot of my white was drying, so I'll put a little more.
It's great how that kind of makes it look like that butterfly wing texture. Mm -hmm. Now there are two dots. Let me get my paint wet. Make sure I've got my, my dotting. Put a dot here and here. Mm -hmm. Here and here. So the dots are like what distracts the birds and stuff. We get a little brown and black. And maybe a little these markings across the way. Turn it. Mm -hmm. And get some white on here again. I'm going to kind of come here in a more focused way. Now, in an interesting kind of turn of events, we're going to do a couple things. Hmm. We're going to take our number four round. Number four round. And then what? We're going to load it with black. Thin it with water. And we're going to come along this wing. And just make sure that we have a nice... I don't know, sort of separating those up, right? Mm -hmm. I may also take my number one, four round at this stage. And add just a few highlights mm. to the veining on the wing. If I need to flip it over. Makes a big difference. Painting anywhere that I want to just give full value or think about what's going on. And I do want to make sure that the wings are right up to his little bum bum. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the bottoms. That turned out really nice. Now we just paint him, his fuzzy little self. I'm going to step back and also take a look. It's pretty good. <sighs> yeah, that's a, that's a nice piece. That, that will, really is. It's a very that nice will show wall. out on the wall well. And sometimes this is what we're just trying to do. We want to put something on the wall that really just transports us and makes us feel like we're in nature or that we're some kind of place, makes serenity in our world. You know, I always like to say, we can't always afford the luxury views, but we can always paint them. And then we have that window. I want to be in Tuscany. I paint Tuscany. I want to overlook a beach in Hawaii. I paint that beach in Hawaii. You know, I may not be able to get the beach house, but I can paint that beach view. And same for you. You might not have the tropical vacation going to the wilds, you know, kind of thing, but you can paint the wild in your home and hang it on your wall and change it out seasonally. Should we take a picture? You want to take a picture of this? Yeah. Let's take a picture. And then we're going to do his little body, and then we're done. It was a big project, but we did it. I think we need to upgrade his hoot to three, though. Just because there's a lot of him. Flamingos were two, but I think he needs to be a, he needs to be a three because he had a bit going on layer-wise just to get the painting to that cohesive finished look. You know, and a lot of times it's easy to make a good looking thumbnail because you're backed out because, you know, you don't really see the painting. 
Um, but the thing is not to just have that great thumbnail. It's about having a painting you guys feel great about at home and has that finished resolve look, you know. So sometimes I like to do pieces where we have that depth in while them. You're, while you're putting that in, uh -huh. I'm going to leave a little public service me service message for everyone. Oh, what is for, it? For all of the support tickets and questions on the events and things that are coming up, those will all you should see a response probably tomorrow for most of those. We just most of the team is off over the weekend, yeah. so we'll see responses out on all those on Monday. Monday. So, but we are responding, and we're we so excited to see the interest. And we're just so grateful that so many people want to come paint with me in person. Um, if you want to know, learn about, about that uh, and you're in the newsletter, check that in. Or if you just want to know about events, go to the events tab on the mm -hmm. You can check it out because we went in June and July, though. I think October is sold out. I think so. We'll have to... so. Okay. Let's finish the fly. Is the, fly. the thing. Is the thing. So he's an interesting little being. Yes, he is. So interesting. I'm going to get my... My plan, oh, it's going to be like this for me today. My, I don't know if you had this, but depending on my hair, like sometimes my face ID does not recognize my face. I know. I love it. I think all the time of the, you know, <laughs> look at my face, Siri faces <laughs> that people make. No, you know, like, I'm so waiting rough. for you. You can see my face. Why aren't you identifying me? The eyes are real big. And then, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like, it's like your eyebrows are lifted. You're like, come on. Now I'm expectantly you know looking. Me. You know who I am. I'm going to take a little blue and black together. And I'm going to do a couple of things. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of come here. And I'm going to just capture this, this basic shape of his head. Right? His head has like a basic shape. And then I'm also going to pull into, this is the ultramarine blue and the Mars black. Okay. And we're just doing that there. And, uh, before I get him in, right now I know mm -hmm. what his little shape is, I'm going to take a little bit of my black and white and fluid paint. Make sure that the wing's here. I'm going to have that little fur before we get him in. Sometimes I'm not really sure where all he's going to go. Mm -hmm. A little bit of pure black thinned out. And I just sort of thin it with water and I swirl it around and then I roll the brush so I can load it on the tip here. And I'm going to bring an antenna. And I'm going to bring an antenna. Little antennas, because he's got them. Mm -hmm. A little bit of orange. I'm going to switch out my water. My water's a little bit dirty. And when your water gets dirty, it can affect uh, the way your paint works. That's true. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my yellow and red and some white. I'm going to come here. Just a little highlight to show those little antennas wait coming in. Wait, 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 wait. You didn't put a step up. up. Oh, my gosh. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get the step up. <laughs> okay. You went on to teach, and I was like, oh, we're teaching. <sighs> Let's go back over here and say this is a step 13. Step 13. So Which is why we forgot it. If you came to the timestamp, back up a little bit, because a little of step 13 was taught in step 12 which was the ultramarine blue and black kind of finishing in his body. And we put out a couple antennas. So sorry. I That's was like... all that you missed. Oh, wait, we feathered his wings a little bit right yeah. here. So if, you, if you're if you time stamping through. We'll dual, we'll dual stamp. Right. Well, it's, no, no, it's okay because I think okay. they'll, they'll know. They'll know. So, let's keep going. Something. I'm going to continue with my fluid black paint. I just want to make sure that this little line is nice. That's pretty good. 
And he's sort of a wonderful, wonderful being, I feel. I'm going to pull out a little of my green that I had from earlier. Okay. This is unexpected, but a little bit of green from earlier. And my first thing is I'm going to take my brown and my yellow together and get into white. And I'm going to curve these strokes into each other. And that's his little thoraxy mm -hmm. bit. When I have that in, I'm going to rinse out my brush and I'm going to get some of my thinned black. I'm going to also blend that in. Okay. Little wow. bits of dimensionality. I'm going to take a little of my blue and green and some yellow together. White where needed. Come back here. Add a little of that. A little more green than what I'm showing. All right. A little yellow and brown and a lot of white. This is a pretty light little hair. You can even let a little of the green get into it. We see the color. Mm -hmm. It's hinted out there. It's a little wetter than I would want. And try that out. I'll come back and fix that with my number, my detail actually. Mm -hmm. Fix that with our detail. This is a detail round. Make that less, less mm -hmm. obvious. It's looking pretty good. It's getting there. He's a getting there. I'm going to get a little black and yellow here on this brush. They say absolutely stunning. I'm sure that his eyes just kind of... And thank you to all the patronage support from that you guys are really, really appreciate. Oh my gosh, thank you guys so much. We are... Uh, I put a post up about it, but I realize sometimes... <laughs> He's like zoomed in. <laughs> I really sometimes um, we don't tell you what it's for. Mm -hmm. And it's always for cameras and lights or new projects or new shows. Right now, uh, everything is going towards the new uh, paint making uh, filming setup that we have a dedicated setup for that. And also down the road for the new children's show. Because mm -hmm. we got to build sets and costumes and everything. And uh, make sure that we have a like, green screen and all that. So that's what everything is going towards. So you're like, man, where is this going? It's. Definitely not to like an electronic car or vacations, but it really does constantly a get. Tesla. No, no, but it does get invested back into the studio and it does uh, extend. So you'll see uh, the results of your patronage. It, you will see more classes out there available for people. You'll see more channels. You'll see more stuff happening. Mm. And that's kind of where it goes. Um, and we really appreciate it. Remember, it's also free when you share the video or you comment. That's a type of patronage. And we appreciate that too, because without the support of viewers, there's no show. Mm -hmm. All right, back into his little face. Back to the... 
<laughs> it's funny. I'm gonna zi I've got some white. I'm going to zip in here. Go for it. Zip in there. You can do that. You're putting little body highlights. Little body highlights because bugs tend to be a little buggy. Where are you going? I'm just stepping back. You're stepping back and looking at that. Oh, yeah. He's, he's coming in beautifully. He really is. Making sure he looks good. I think he looks as good as he, he looks great. I think he looks pretty Actually, fantastic. I'm super happy with him. Yeah? Yeah. I think I might just do one little highlight of little hairs on him, and then I just very barely tip my grass comb and down here and make sure these guys. Yeah, beautiful. It looks soft and fuzzy. Soft and fuzzy is the goal. And you know what the next goal is? Sign the painting. The so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the painting to the side and I'm going to sign right here. You're going to paint, sign it upside down? And we're going to sign, well, along the leaf with a little yellow and green. You, know, you want to be able to see it, but it doesn't want to be the whole painting. I see a Melanie Jensen mentioned. Mm. Is there a question? Uh, let's see here. There's a. What day are the. Uh, the S Sylvia was asking this last oh. question, which says, What day are the tips posted? It says 11 a.m., but not the day. Oh, that's right. It does. So here's what. <laughs> so like, <laughs> um, right now, we are learning how to make the tip video because we're trying to make them in a new way. We've tried a bunch of different ways. And when. When a tip doesn't work or the video doesn't work, what we do is we go back to the drawing board and we ask ourselves, why? Like, what about the video didn't resonate broadly? And then we come back with some design things. The new tips, um, we hopefully feel like we're answering those questions, right? Because everybody liked the idea of short videos, just kind of abstractly. Mm -hmm. So I, there has to be one on Thursday at 11 a.m. because I need to do the black fur tip. Before we paint the black dog, the black lab next week for Big Art Quest, because Big Art Quest is all about dogs this year. Before we paint him, I feel like we should go back to fur and really look at black fur, short black fur. We'll do another curly black fur. We're going to do a long black fur. We're going to cover all the fur, all the noses, all the eyes, most of the breeds, I imagine. So that by the end of it, y'all are like, I can paint a dog. First of all, if you can paint a dog portrait, you can feed yourself as an artist. That's an important thing to know. If you can do pet portraits, you can eat as an artist, even in rough times, because people will paint their pets. Mm. They will. And they'll love their pet pictures. I love pet portrait clientele because they're like the happiest clientele in, in portraiture. Painting people's kids is rough. Painting people's pets is a joy. So, you know, helping you guys do dogs. And then, you know, we can, like all the cat people will be like, what about the cats? So it gives us like an excuse on the next quest, what we're going to do. But also it's going to cover that for in that, I've also got a tree tip that we've done where we're just looking at pine trees specifically, and we're going to go through some trees and look at different types of trees and how they're painted in and of the tree. Tips should be 15 to 20 minutes. I've answered everything but when. So <laughs> the goal is Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. if the tip is done. Mm. And I haven't decided if we're going to do it as a premiere or a drop. Or drop. Don't know that yet. But 11 a.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays is the goal. Cool. Will this Tuesday there be a yep. tip? I hope so. For sure Thursday there has to be a tip on black fur. <laughs> yeah, no, we got lots of new stuff coming. New lights, new cameras, new setup for the uh, make paint stuff. Yeah, now those are going to be dropping over so, on the watercolor channel to make paints. We haven't figured out their schedule yet either, but probably something similar. Um, we'll probably drop a paint or two one minute short. You'll see the paint making early shorts on mobile. So if you're watching YouTube, check your mobile because there's two areas of YouTube you might not have noticed, which is shorts. Those are one minute videos. 
and then stories, which are 15 second. I only have stories on the Art Sherpa channel right now, which is where I'm answering questions via video. Um, I have shorts over on the watercolor and shorts here. So we're working on both of those as well. As mm -hmm. And then there's going to be live paint making because we realized, dude, not only can we show you all how to do it, we can show you live. We can do it live. Like I answer real questions that you have to have. And then in the machinations, what I told you on this morning is I'd like, I'd like to make every color in my watercolor palette. And then I can paint with it. And then I'd like to make every color in my acrylic palette. And then I can paint with it. Mm -hmm. Except cadmium. I'm not going to make cadmium. I'll make a hue because I don't want to die. And that's too many safety concerns <laughs> to make. Because it's not, it's like painting with cadmium is kind of like eh, general safety. Don't eat it. Don't drink it. Don't smear it all over your body, right? Um, making it, however, is a whole nother deal. It's why that paint is $40 a tube sometimes is the paint maker has to use the uh, pigment, which is particled. It's, it's powdered, which can get in their lungs and can be serious. So uh, knowing that, I'm not going to do it. Mm. And then I've also heard that phthalo blue is the hardest color to make, like of all the paints by far. <laughs> I don't know why that is. So uh, in acrylic, acrylic is very different than watercolor. Watercolor is pretty friendly. But again, I won't be making any cadmiums in either line. Did you need to know any of that? I don't know. But now I've told you, and so you do. <laughs> and if you're here five years later, you're going to be like, what is this woman talking about? It's one painted butterfly. And what we do here, we are unique in it. We are true. Our, our mayhem is unique to us. I hope you liked today's lesson. This was really pretty. Uh, next weekend, we've got our black lab and we're going to be painting him as a portrait, like a dog portrait. And then, uh, we have coming up the barn with the poppies and the flag, and then also the lavender. I'm excited about all of it. Tell me what you want to paint. Make sure you let me know if you need a father's day painting coming up in June. Cause if you do, you got to tell me in the comments, a bunch of you say it, I'm going to do it. But like a bunch of you got to say it. So get everyone you know to come say it, huh. say it. And then I'll feel compelled to do it. I am um, tip by comments. And if you want a video answer from me, go answer my story on, on the channel. You can find it on mobile. I showed you earlier in the video. I don't know. Is there anything else to be said I other than we love you guys very, very much? Appreciate that you still watch us because we know you got choices. Mm -hmm. And that you come back and you choose to watch us means everything. Just like literally it's everything. Yeah. It's everything. And I really appreciate that. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you and Anisal really soon. Bye-bye.